One of the great pleasures that's lost in the world today is that of jam making. And I hope in this video to persuade other people to make their own jam. I'm a man who likes variety and um, so I don't like just having one jam in the fridge. I have to have about 12, which is uncommon because I don't usually have 12 jars of different types of jam in the fridge. It's just at the moment I, I tend to have quite a few in there. At the moment I've got sort of raspberry, I've got lemon curd, I've got ginger curd, I've got ginger jam. Uh, so I've got quite a lot in there at the moment. And recently I added this one to the mix, which is gooseberry jam. And I picked the fruit myself and then I turned it into jam. I also picked some strawberries and turned that into jelly. But that's another story. This is jam, not jelly. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is gooseberry jam. It's got that wonderful uh, black speck in it, which I think is uh, wonderful. It just looks good on the shelf, you know. Alas, I live in this house where I'm not allowed to build shelves, so they just have to sit somewhere else. Uh, I've made fig jam, mango jam, uh, gooseberry jam, uh, red berry jam, which was a combination of raspberries, red currants, and other things. Um, I've made jam on behalf of people. My, my friend who does more jam making, uh, we've done things like loganberry jam, blackberry jam. So we've done a few there. And one of my favourites to make is carrot jam because it's cheap and it also tastes delicious. But when you tell people, oh I make carrot jam, they go, carrot jam? You can't make jam out of carrots? Uh, which is of course nonsense because you can and it's a delicious sweet jam and it's really delicious. So, mm. Yeah, and um, I think what's good about jam making is that you can have a product which is considerably different from that you get in the shops. I mean, there's certainly something different about the tastes. I mean, I think because the homemade jams, they have more fruit in them. You know, it's sort of a, a half and half, 50-50, you know, 50 sugar, 50 uh, fruit. Uh, that it, it tastes, you know, a whole lot fresher and... and and sweeter in, in, in some circumstances. Now, yes, of course, there's the labour that goes into making jam. I mean, you don't always have to pick your fruit. Um, it's just that it's the time of year to pick fruit at the moment. Um, so, if you don't pick fruit, you can buy, you know, the ingredients um, for it. For example, with fig jam, we bought some dried figs and then cooked them. That's a rather expensive jam, really, fig jam. But, um, so the process of making homemade jam, basically you find your fruit and you need a quantity. Quantity is always the uh, sort of confusing part of it all. But uh, you cook your fruit and then you add the sugar. It's uh, usually um, a certain amount of granulated and then uh, probably a kilo of jam sugar. And then you have to sort of keep stirring, 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 stirring. Because if you don't stir, you burn, and that makes the jam horrid. Uh, I can't remember which jam I was doing before, but it, it turned out like that, and it was like, Ooh. And then you have to boil it, and boil it, and boil it, until it's uh, at a rolling boil, uh, which is considerably hot, so no putting your finger in. And then you have to test it to see if it will set by putting a plate into the freezer uh, and then after a few minutes holding it uh, sort of that way and seeing if it uh, doesn't move really just slightly moves and then you start putting it in the jars and that's always the fun part because there's always the possibility that your jars can crack and that is annoying but it's also very scary, you know, you're putting this boiling hot substance into a jar. You have to heat your jars, of course, before doing it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're putting this boiling hot substance into these jars and you think, oh, is it going to crack? When I first started doing jam making, that was always very daunting. Um, I mean, the worst I ever had was, like, we were putting these, this jam into these jars and one after the other, crack, crack, crack. Um... So there must be very poor quality jars. Um, and of course, that's another wonderful thing about jam making, personally, for me. I mean, this probably isn't true of other people. But going around the streets looking for jars. 
you know, going and looking in people's recycling bins and seeing if they've got pound jars, uh, you know, because pound jars are the best, really. Mm. Because then you can say, oh, I've made six pound jars of gooseberry jam. Or I've made uh, seven jars of um, beetroot jam. Which is what I've not done before, but I would like to try and see what it tastes like. Beetroot jam. Mm. And you find that certain jams don't work well with other things. Like, you know, some jams don't work well on toast. Uh, some jams are better for sandwiches. Um, uh, you know, some taste good on... Uh, well, I, th I think all of them taste good on, on rice cakes. Um, uh, and some don't taste good on rye vita. But, you know, you've just got to experiment. But it, it, it is uh, it's something that's close to my heart when I think that more people should do it. Because it is fun. It's a good hobby. And what you get in the end is rather spectacular. Well, I'll be off now. Have a bit of the old gooseberry jam. Made by me.